Hey guys, Dr. Andrew here from Rabina Chiropractic Wellness Center. Now, if you're watching this video, you might think you have a rotator cuff issue. But first, before I get into any sort of uh, exercises on what to do, I wanna to talk to you about what is the rotator cuff and what does it mean to have a tear or inflammation of the tendons or even if you might have heard a thing called a bursitis of the shoulder. So first things first, the rotator cuff is a group of four muscles. The four muscles cup your shoulder like so and each one of those four fingers there is part of the rotator cuff. One of the muscles will bring your shoulder into the shoulder joint and keep it from becoming unstable and falling out or dislocating and it'll also do the movement from here to here. The next one is an external rotator and it helps pull the shoulder back. The other one is an internal rotator which helps move the shoulder forward and the other one pulls back like that. Each of these four muscles will keep that shoulder stable inside its socket and allow free movement of the shoulder whichever direction you want to go. Now a rotator cuff problem is when you have one muscle working harder than the other muscles. Now it might be because you have a weakness because of poor posture, you might have a weakness because you have a tear in another muscle and then what happens is this other muscle compensating for it works too hard and as it attaches onto the bone you get an inflammation or a tendonitis type sort of symptom. Now the best treatment for that is just ice and gentle stretching and making sure that you're stretching the right muscle in the right direction and of course avoid those movements that cause it problems. Now the next thing that could happen if this problem stays too long is that you could get inflammation of the bursa. Now what that does is causes pain on the shoulder but it also limits lots of movements and if left uncorrected it could lead to a frozen shoulder. Now a frozen shoulder can take up to 12 months, I've even seen people take 18 months to get better with these conditions. So the best thing for you to do is to get this diagnosed as soon as possible so that you can do the right stretches and exercises for that shoulder. Now as a chiropractor, one of the common things that I see is people with bad posture that contributes to the overworking of the shoulders. So in a lot of cases, we actually don't need to treat the shoulder. If we just treat your spine and if we treat the alignment of your shoulders and allow the nervous system to do what it's supposed to, that will keep your shoulder in the right position uh, alone. But if you've got some problems with your rotator cuff, stay with me and I'm gonna do some exercises for you on how you can stretch that shoulder. And what's worse, if it's got to that point of frozen shoulder, I'll give you some exercises that you can start with. But with all my exercises, if they don't help, please consult me or your health protect practitioner and they'll investigate this more thoroughly and give you the correct set of exercises to do. I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, welcome back. So I'm gonna go through my favorite exercises for rotator cuff issues. I'm gonna start with the simple ones and we're gonna work our way into the most complicated ones. If you have a frozen shoulder, please don't do those exercises at the very end until you've mastered the first ones. And with all these exercises, you're gonna do them every single day. You're gonna do them multiple times during the day. If you're doing left, you're gonna do right. If you're gonna do internal, you're gonna do external. So the first exercise I'm gonna get you to do, real basic one, and you're gonna trick your brain and your muscles on this one. If you're having difficulty raising your shoulder, you're just gonna to go to the wall and with your fingers, you're gonna walk your finger up the wall. As far as you can go, walk your fingers down. You'd be surprised that just the pressure on the wall allows these muscles to deactivate and it actually stretches your shoulder joint. Now a similar exercise I'll get you to do, I call the elephant's trunk. What you'll need is you need a chair and you'll need to get your torso horizontal to the ground. So as you lean forward like this, you won't be able to see my hand, but you swing your arm forwards and backwards like a pendulum. So if I stand up, in essence, you're doing this movement, which you can't do when you're standing, but it's very easy to do when your body's horizontal. Now, when you master this movement, then I want you to go sideways, left and right, left and right. When you get good at that, I want you to rotate your thumb downwards and then do the up and down, left and right. And at the final stages of it, you can write the alphabet with your hand. We call this the elephant trunk exercise. Now the next exercise that's really good is that we need to stretch the shoulder in front of your body. And then the opposite would be letting it come behind. 
So we would grab a wall or a door frame and then just walk through it. You might find that you'll get a stronger stretch if you have your hand below the shoulder or a stronger stretch if you get your hand above the shoulder. Make sure that your torso doesn't rotate, that you keep your torso perfectly straight as that arm gets pulled backwards. Now we need to work the internal and the external rotators. Now I've done some exercises on the internal rotators, check those out on YouTube, but the easiest way to do that is to grab a broom and then you place it behind you and then stretch backwards like that. You can also use a door like I was saying before, um, but for internal and external rotators, what I want you to use is an elastic band. So this is a medium or a, a medium to light strength elastic band. To stretch it, just move that chair. To stretch it, you're going to keep your arm next to your body here and then just walk away and it'll stretch it outwards. And of course, we could do the same for internal stretching as well. And if you wanna do a strengthening exercise, then you can step away and you can turn it in, turn it in. Turn it out, turn it out. Now with all those exercises with the strengthening one, you do 12 to um, 10 to 12 uh, repetitions, three to four sets with those three times a day, thanks. Now, the next one I'll get you to do is to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Pull your shoulders back and tuck them down. Pull your shoulder blades back and tuck them down. And you're gonna hold it in that position for as long as you can. 30 to 60 seconds until those muscles burn. The next one, we get you to do with the broomstick, if you've got an impingement of your shoulder, so this is probably more of a frozen shoulder exercise, you can actually grab the broomstick with one hand, this arm will do nothing, and with this hand, you can actually push it up. My hand here is doing nothing, so you can push it up, you can push it out to the side, you can push it over to the other side. You can even sit on a chair, hold the top of the broomstick, and as you're slowly going down, it'll decompress that shoulder. So that's a great exercise for that. And then the last exercise that can be good, and this is a final exercise, you can hang off a tree or you can hang from a door. And that'll allow all those internal muscles to separate. So I hope these exercises help you. If you have any difficulties, if these exercises make you worse, um, please contact my office or call your local uh, health provider to help you with them. And if they do help you, please comment below and say thanks for the exercises, Andrew. And I will see you in another day on another exercise another time. That's Andrew from Rabina Coro Wellness Centre. Bye for now.